Hi guys, Rian here, and today I'll be sharing with you various things in preparation for Inazuma. The first news that everyone would have seen in their mail are the new banners coming in patch 2.0. Ayaka will be coming with Yanfei, Ningguang, and Chongyun. Personally, I find these three characters quite a bad combination with Ayaka, but this is because Mihoyo knows everyone wants her. It doesn't matter which 4-star character they put on the banner, all the Ayaka sims are going to roll for her. To me, the best 4-star characters that pair well with Ayaka are going to be Sing Chiu and Xiang Ling. Based on my knowledge on Ayaka, she is a super cryo applicator, and this makes it very difficult for her to be doing melt reactions. However, this makes Xiang Ling a good pair as she can trigger multiple melt reactions with Pyronado. As for Sing Chiu, he works wonderfully with any normal attack user. Paired with Ayaka, they form a very strong perma freeze team. I know many of you guys have been waiting for Ayaka, and this is all the reason you need to roll for her. She doesn't need to be the strongest DPS in the game, as long as you enjoy her playstyle and design is more than enough. The second banner we got is the new weapon banner, and I'm telling you the new 5 star weapons are so damn sick. Similar to Staff of Homa, the new 5 star weapons give crit damage as their main stat. For this, you can get more info on Genshin Impact's Twitter account. The first 5 star weapon we'll be getting is the Miss Splitter Reforge. This gives 674 base attack and 44.1% crit damage. The first passive this weapon gives is it adds 12% elemental bonus damage for all elements. This means your Ayaka is doing 12% more cryo, pyro, hydro bonus damage and so on. The second passive increases the user's elemental bonus damage depending on the stacks. You can have a total of 3 stacks starting with 8%, 16% and on 3 stacks a total of 28% elemental bonus damage. You can gain stacks by using normal attacks that are infused with an element or casting your elemental burst. But there is a catch. Here it says you can only gain stacks when energy is less than 100%. Stacks disappear when energy is full. I'm not sure if they mean one stack or all the stacks disappear. This also means the elemental bonus damage from the stacks will never apply on your elemental burst because as soon as you have energy, your stacks disappear. I really have to test it when it is released. From what I understand, this weapon is the strongest as soon as you activate your elemental burst. This gives you one stack, then doing elemental infused attacks will give you two more. The second passive is not really ideal for every sword user because only Keqing, Ayaka and C6 Kazuha is able to infuse their weapons. Of course, you can use Chongyun and C6 Burnett, but that is very situational. But even if you don't get all 3 stacks on this weapon, just a 674 base attack, 44% crit damage, 12% elemental bonus from the basic passive, and 8% more from casting elemental burst makes it a very strong weapon. The second weapon, Thundering Pulse is also very similar to the Mist Splitter, and has a base attack of 608 with 66.2% crit damage. This weapon will be coming with Yoimiya, and it is also another insane weapon. The first passive grants the user 20% attack straight up. All these stats alone is already such a good weapon. You don't even need to activate the second passive for it to be strong. The second passive is more catered towards normal attack bow users such as Yoimiya, Chao, and Fischl. You can gain up to 3 stacks, starting at 12%, then 24% and 40% normal attack damage. You can gain each stack through normal attacks or using an elemental skill. Similar to the Mist Splitter, you can only gain stacks when energy is less than 100%. The stacks vanish when your energy is full. My thoughts on this weapon are, it is going to be very strong, mainly because of the high base attack, crit damage main stat and the first passive of the weapon. The second passive of the weapon doesn't apply to every sword or bow user, but even if you ignore that, the weapon is still very strong. The next thing I want to talk about is how I've been preparing for Inazuma. The number one thing on my list is stockpiling my resin. Inazuma will be coming with new bosses, artifact domains and talent book domains. Every new character coming in 2.0 will be needing those new boss materials and talent books. So if you plan to build Ayaka on day 1, you are going to need all the resin. Right here, I've only gotten 17 fragile resin, mostly from the last battle pass. I kind of regret spending my fragile resin from the previous patches, because 17 fragile resin is barely enough. I've also been stockpiling up to a maximum of 5 condensed resin. Lastly, I've also purchased transient resin from last week's shop. Since today is Monday, the shop would have reset and I can get myself the second transient resin anytime. Second thing is I've been stockpiling my hero suite and Mora. These are the only two things that can sort of be pre-farmed for the new Inazuma characters. I'll be doing a showcase with Ayaka and Electro Traveler when Inazuma comes. I have pre-farmed enough hero suite and Mora to bring Ayaka straight to level 90. 
As for my traveller, he's ready at level 90. The third thing to prepare for Inazuma is to skip your weekly reputation quest until the update goes live on Wednesday. Today is Monday and many of you will want to do your weeklies, such as world bosses and reputation quests, but Inazuma will be coming with his own reputation quest. This includes the bounty quest and the request. Since most of you have already maxed your reputation in Mondstadt and Li Yue, it will be a better option to save for Inazuma and get a head start on the rewards and achievements. The last thing I would like to share is to check out the Inazuma Diaries posted on Genshin Impact official site. Here they share a lot of information regarding new enemies, new materials, new puzzles to give you a rough idea on the things to look out for. If you are like me who want to harvest as many materials for Ayaka and Electro Traveler on day 1 of Inazuma, getting to know how the mechanism works will give you a head start. I would also suggest to bring at least one Electro character during an adventure on Inazuma to make your life easier. But if you are a more chill and relaxed player, reading this info may not be the best option. This may ruin the element of surprise you wanted. I'm only doing this as a content creator to get myself prepared. I hope everyone is excited for the new chapter coming to Genshin Impact. I surely can't wait for all the new characters and regions to be live. If you want to check out my Ayaka and Electro Traveler showcase on release, leave a like and subscribe to my channel. As always, thank you for watching.